All right, guys, we are live here at the Anaheim Convention Center. This is Ricardo Amadolia and Mr. Robert Drysdale, the 2019 ADCC World Championship. And Robert, we have an intense match for our opening matchup, Nick Rodriguez versus Roberto Cyborg Abreu. Tell us your thoughts on this matchup. Crazy, man. I can't wait for this. Uh, I was just telling you earlier, man, I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so excited about watching these matches. And Nick has been very impressive, man. Like, he had a war with Muhammad Ali. He won by decision. And I think that threw a lot of people off. And then he beat Orlando Sanchez, which is an even bigger upset because yep. how do you out-wrestle Orlando Sanchez, right? And yes. he was making Orlando work. And here he is against ADCC champion Cyborg, who's a lot, he's, you know, he's got the experience on Nick. Yeah. Nick's got the youth on his side. On his side. But, uh, you know, Cyborg kind of going for what I expected him to do, Ricardo. Pull guard in the first, you know, t uh, five minutes, see what's going to happen. We don't know, you know, if, if Nick is going to have that same level, uh, skill level that Cyborg has in terms of, like, uh, um, ground game. Like, he's proven to be a very dominant wrestler. We haven't seen him on the ground that much. And I think Cyborg does have an advantage here. And he's really trying to score the points in the first, uh, the, the, before the overtime. Because if this goes overtime, Nick may have an advantage yeah. because of his wrestling skills. Absolutely. You know, we've seen Cyborg work a lot of wrestling in his recent competitions over this last year, especially. But Nick Rodriguez is wrestling just on another level. You know, I was chatting with uh, one of the documentarians the other day, and he asked me, like, you know, are you surprised that he's doing so well, uh, only training jiu-jitsu at like 14 months or whatever it was, but he's also got a high-level wrestling degree, Nick Rodriguez. But you could also see when he does get to the ground, as you mentioned, we haven't really seen a lot of it. Very basic. Very yeah. basic back take, rear naked choke. He's not doing crazy, you know, Baron Bolo, no. the kiss of the dragon. It's it's but, very bread and butter but basics. Here's, here's the thing. That stuff that works. Ricardo, in the heavyweight division, After. that's what you yeah. need. You yeah. need dominant wrestling skills, more so in the heavyweights than the lightweights, right? The yeah. lightweights tend to be a little more sophisticated, a little more articulate with their grappling. The heavyweights, it's basically this. Get on top, stay on top. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And that's always been, like, the norm in, in, in jiu-jitsu. Unless and you're Cyborg, because he's inverting, he's doing everything. I always say the Cyborg is, like, almost like the exception of the rule. Like, yeah. how many heavyweights do you see play guard going inverted and being that, like, mobile from the bottom, right? It's, yeah. more, it's, not, it's not so common. And if there's someone that can sweep Nick Rodriguez, that person is Cyborg. So we're, we might see that happen right now. Rodriguez on the top of... Got a lot of exciting matches here, Ricardo. We got the Hulk and Gordon Ryan on the other side. We got Kainan Duarte and Bushesha, Cyborg and Nate Rodriguez. Like every single one of these fights is a super fight. Cyborg there. Playing. You can see Nick is almost a little hesitant to dive in. He's, I think he wants this fight to go to overtime. That's where he would have the best chance against Cyborg. I think it's fair to say Cyborg is the favorite for this fight. And Nick is less experienced, but he does have that takedown advantage. He's, he's very fast. I was very surprised how fast he was. And, you know, I think that that's what Dick is trying to do here. He's trying to stay in Cyborg's guard long enough to take this, you know, fight into deep waters. And that's where his condition was incredible, although Cyborg never really breaks either. So it might be one of those matches that will be decided in, in overtime. Cyborg looked like he was taking a page out of Gordon Ryan's book, uh, you know, using the butterfly guard to elevate Nick and attack that short arm bar up on the shoulder there it's very interesting to see how cyborg's game is constantly evolving and he's always bringing yeah. new tools every time he competes I, I call it the white belt mentality yeah the most successful athletes i've ever met in my life ricardo were the ones that never lost that mentality you know they kept that thing where i'm gonna i'm never done learning or some some moments some people get that mindset where they go i got it I don't, you know, you got nothing to teach yeah. me. I got, I got my game all figured out. And that's when you're done learning, right? Cyborg is one of those guys, a very open-minded guy. Anyone who knows Cyborg is a sweetheart, such a nice guy, such a great ambassador to the sport. And at 38, 39, still active at ECC at the highest level. Highest level. Very impressive. And, you know, Cyborg, another organization, he competed, won the open weight Grand Prix recently, defeating a lot of the big names in this bracket. So he's definitely one of the favorites in here. But just the hype train around Nick Rodriguez has been insane and you know you mentioned earlier on his matches were just amazing oh. five minutes 35 seconds left in this match and cyborg is one of those guys that once that five minute mark um you know hits he's you see a different kind of mode go into you yes know, different, different rhythm and speed going into cyborg yeah he definitely switches gears and it makes sense strategically for him to do that uh let's see what happens i wonder if nick's gonna do the same if nick's gonna be a little more aggressive as well i he's on his knees a lot which is a typical wrestler stance when it comes when they're making that first transition jiu-jitsu. They don't like to stay on their feet a lot. Um, 
which makes them less aggressive. Like, the good thing about the knee is that your defense is pretty solid if you know what you're doing. But again, your offense suffers, right? Because you don't, it's very difficult to get to someone's side when you got your knees on the ground. Yeah. Right? And the pressure is off too there, him standing up. Maybe because the points are on, so he switches gears now. He would rather be standing for a passing, which and makes Nick, sense. And nice little switch pass there, trying to get double unders for a sec. And you know, I, I think staying a little bit of distance, maybe baiting Cyborg to get back to his feet somehow, will probably play into Rodriguez's advantage. Once again, yeah. guys, we're live here at the Anaheim Convention Center, the 2019 ADCC World Championship. This is uh, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest, ADCC event in the sports history. We're live, Ricardo Amendola here with Full Grappling and Mr. Robert Drysdale, the 2007 Openweight Champion of ADCC, Super Fight Veteran as well. And you know, uh, Braulio was here yesterday, and he was telling, or actually Shanji was here yesterday, he was telling me a little bit about the feeling that once you hit that five minute mark and you yeah. hear the referee say points. Yes. Uh, describe that being in the match and what that you know, means it, to you. It, it means you're alert. It's almost like your game plan changes. So let's say you have a very submission oriented game, right? You can take chances. You can jump that flying triangle. You can go for that heel hook you normally wouldn't go for. You can jump that guillotine. You are a little more relaxed. It's almost like a, a flow roll in the gym where you're not really caring where you end up, right? But the second the clock takes, now like your game plan gets on. Now I have to be strategical. Now I have to like you know make decisions based off of my skill set, my opponent's skill set, the score, the time, my injuries, his injuries. So all these different elements come into the equation, right? And Absolutely. you have to become more tactical all of a sudden. And I like both aspects. I've always liked ADCC because I feel it's a very neutral rule set. Yeah. It brings the best of all worlds. And um, I think the crowd agrees. Like it's uh, it's a very special event. And the rules are fairly simple, which is good too. So yeah. it's easy to for the crowd to keep up. They're not very complex. Um, but yeah, like it's, um, it's it's the Olympics of the sport for a reason. Yeah, you know, we talk about the rules, uh, the point system kind of began uh, similar to the IBJJF or regular BJJ tournament point system, but a little bit of a modification. I just want to talk about that. So passing the guard is three points, knee on stomach is two points, but you can actually switch your knees to yeah. the far and close knee to get those points. Uh, mount position is only two points, back mount with hooks three, a takedown, regular one, is two. Yeah. And if you do a clean takedown ending in side control, that's four points. Sweeps uh, ends in the guard or half guard, two points. A clean sweep, which ends in a pass, is four points. So there's little variations to the rules. And uh, you know, knowing those variations and those intricacies, Robert, how would you talk about your experience in training you know, under those rule sets and how different is it from the regular You know, it's, it's got a lot of similarities with uh, IBJJF point system. But um, you, you do have to make some, some adaptations. Like, for example, the main one to me is you don't score points in turtle. So if I take you down or sweep you end up in turtle, it's nothing, which yeah. exposes the back a lot more because everyone's going to turtle. So your back take's got to be on point. Oh, and you talk about oh. back take. Rodriguez spun to the back of Cyborg. Almost got there, but Cyborg just Cyborg, very smoothly recovered. He's, he's very loose in his guard. He, yeah. like, his guard is a guard of a lightweight. You know, And I, I, I don't know when Cyborg started training, but a lot of times guys that have that sort of guard, Ricardo, it's because they started training very young. Yeah. Like Shish is like that. He moves like he's like 12, but he's 250, 260 pounds, right? But they maintain that sort of mobility of someone who started training when they were really young when their only advantage is mobility, right? I suspect Cyborg started very young too, and he seems, he moves like, you know, he doesn't move like someone his weight is what yeah. I'm saying. Rodriguez trying to stuff the half guard of Cyborg. Minute, 18 seconds left. Can he get close enough? Cyborg recovers so well. And, and Rodriguez is passing, it's just side to side, very athletic, oh. almost gets to the back of Cyborg once again on that top spin. Cyborg grabbing a leg, trying to get a reversal, this getting up. Reversal. Oh, takes the big man down, does Cyborg. He's got to be careful. Oh, and Rodriguez Beautiful. with the throw. Now taking the back of Cyborg, once again, Cyborg rolling out. Nick, very strong wow. position. You can see when he moves, he moves with a lot of power. And Cyborg is hanging in there. Great defense. But what a blitz from Nick. Wow, very impressive. With 40 seconds left, they know what's up. They're trying to score those points right now. And, and what do you think psychologically that's going through the mind of Cyborg right now? Because, you know, he, 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 got, I, he, got, he almost got the advantage. He almost got on top. But Rodriguez threw him, but he was able to scramble. So it's like he didn't really lose that scramble, but I, it, it was kind of halfway. Yes, I think he's, he's a little in shock right now. This is, I don't expect Nick to get that close to passing his guard because yeah. Nick had never... You know, it was, a, it was the first time he actually almost did something to Cyborg, and I think he threw Cyborg oh. off a little bit. This is, this is Cyborg's chance. 
There's the time. Cy we said we know Cyborg's got some nice suplexes from yeah, this position. This is maintaining Rodriguez down. Yeah, he's got to get the back. The, the yeah. center referee is looking at the table, looking for, oh, he's peeling the yeah. far arm and going for yeah, a triangle. Is Cyborg attacking beautiful the arm, spinning arm, Rodriguez. Beautiful arm. Wow. Rodriguez gets the reversal, gets to the back of Cyborg. Time, Time has expired. Wow. wow, what a closing minute of this match. Okay, Ricardo, here's my question to you. If that were decision, who won that fight right now? Well, I I mean, if I had to, had to, had to, had to, yeah. Cyborg was the only one that had kind of a submission attack. Yes. That's it. Yes. But that's not... But the, Nick got to his back. Yes. So, yes, I, I, I'm with it's, you. It's, it's tough it's close. to say. It's tough to say. And I think that's why they're going to the overtime. You know, it wasn't a definitive no, um, absolutely. thing that happened. It was very close, it although right. he had the submission. Um, you know, I'm sure Nick's going to argue it wasn't even anywhere close to being. It was pretty back. close, man. Like, he was, yeah. like, his, his hips were slightly off. And, like, you know, which put, like, at Nick's elbow a little bit out of that armbar. But he barely got out. Yep. Robert, I think we're going to have to watch our, our wait in our table here because I have a feeling... Because yeah, these, any, these any guys are going to start smashing. You know, me and Brawley, well, I thought we took our table in the, for the Portuguese commentators a little bit further away. Yeah. And we're like, we kind of got the best seat in the house because like, there's no chance anyone's going to fall on yeah. this error. But out here, it could happen. So Hopefully we got some cameramen in front of us as buffers. Yeah. You can see them both starting a little. After that exchange, Ricardo, can you blame these guys for being tired? Oh, it's, it's insane. The amount of, like... Scrambles for a normal person after two or three of them, you know, that's, yeah. that takes all the gas out of your tank. But these guys just keep going. About to stand up exchange here, three to three minutes left now. It's going to be about aggression oh. if it goes decision. The, the, the judges have really been leaning towards a more aggressive Absolutely. Uh, fighter, right? Whoever's attacking more, even if the attacks are failed, it's a different criteria from MMA, for example, where like they, they, they reward defense a lot, right? If you defend a shot, and ADCC, IBJJF rules, they're rewarding offense. So whoever attacks more is gonna take the decision. So on mat number one, you can hear the crowd going nuts. We have Kainan Duarte against Marcus Almeida Buchecha. On mat number three, Gordon Ryan versus Lucas Hulk Barboza. Mat number two, Roberto Cyborg Abreu against Nick Rodriguez. And this match, this you got to admit, this is this has been so competitive for both competitors. It's not really leaning towards one or the other. We know Rodriguez likes the, uh, the takedown, but he's not really implemented any successful takedowns so far. A lot of back take attempts, a yes. lot of athletic passing attempts. It's so hard to 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 solidify a takedown in stupid yeah. see There's a reason why we have so many overtimes. You practically have to pin your opponent yes. with a half guard or a close guard. And like I remember back in the days when I was competing ACC, I would like have the idea of like I'm locking your lower back and I'm pinning you in close guard and I'm pulling myself in your close guard. That's the best way of pinning someone. It's not best jujitsu because I don't like my arms trapped in your close guard, but yeah. it's a good way of holding someone down. But Cy Cyborg, I was just gonna say, Cyborg's shooting for the single. Do you think he's gonna go for the pull after the three second mark here? He could. I mean, I mean, or you think he's going to insist on that takedown? I, I think he's, I think he's going to insist on the takedown, but you never know, man. Like he's got a very good guard. Cyborg's one of the best, probably the best guard in the heavyweight division. So there we go. You were right. Yeah, that man. was uh, something that Braulio and I chatted about. Is that you know that rule where shooting on a single, if you get after three or four seconds, you're yeah. allowed to do the well, guard pull off of that shot. When I, when I lost to Jacare, that's how I lost. Ah. I shot in and I pulled guard after what I thought was three seconds. Watching tape, it's more like two, <laughs> right? And I got two points scored on me. Nice he cartwheel does. there by Nick. Always yeah, fun to watch. Super athletic passing, you know, yeah. cartwheels, knee cuts, just everything, mixing up side to side, uh, you know, redirectional passing. Oh, yeah, cyber, cyber with a nice little... Inside but see, trip like, there. That's not a lot, but this little stuff that they're doing right now counts. What Absolutely. they're doing is trying to impress the judges going, look, I'm attacking more. I got better, more tools. I got more options here. I am leaning towards Cyborg right now, to be honest. But, you know, it's still a minute left and a lot can happen. Yep. Rodriguez with another passing attempt now with the double unders. Oh, almost went with one arm underneath, almost got caught in the triangle. Cyborg trying to get and that. Nick is bringing it, man. Very aggressive. Great gas tank. Like, he's not stopping. Car and Cyborg doesn't break either, but you can see they're both a little worn out, but still pushing it. 
40 seconds left in this 99 and plus kilo division stacked division of monsters here. Roberto Cyborg Abreu against the newcomer Nick Rodriguez. Bradley Ostima made a comment that uh, he thinks he's going to give Rodriguez a stripe on his blue belt if he if he makes it to the podium. Yeah. Well. I think that's kind of weird, like, the meaning of the opponent. Because, like, let's be frank, he's a black belt at wrestling. Yes. You know, and he's winning with wrestling, right? So you got to be careful not to over overplay him a blue belt card. You know, yeah. he's not really a blue belt. He's a blue belt in the sense where he's been trained just not that long, but he's been grappling wrestling, his whole yes. life. And ADCC rule set is designed to be, you know, wrestling-oriented, yeah, right? Yeah, it's neutral for any grappling yes, art exactly. to come in here. But predominantly... The jiu-jitsu athletes are the ones uh, that have been reigning yeah. supreme. Yes, I am know. going with Cyborg here, Ricardo, but not by much. Thoughts? I, I think it, I think it could go either way. I really do. I, I think that they might even go for another overtime. I, I really do. I don't think that... Possible. I think that nothing was so definitive in that last overtime. Let's take a look, see what the ref is going to do. Oh, no, I think we have a decision here. And let's see what happens. And your wow. winner, Nick Rodriguez. Wow. I proud in disbelief. Wow, that was that was a so Cyborg very upset because he's saying I had the arm, I had the arm, I'm That's the only one to attack. Ball. But I, I yeah. understand that. But what we need to figure out is where the criteria what? for I none just I just saw that. What? This is the tournament of upsets. Kind of towards it, just beat Mark Salvador Bouchesha. But back to this match here. Cyborg, you know, a little upset because he had the arm. But what I think happened was they only count 